Hey, y'all, welcome to the Entrepreneur CFO Show, the podcast where we have candid conversations around the topics that entrepreneurs need to know. We dive into numbers, systems, strategies, things that the entrepreneur needs to try to achieve their dreams, right? Because if you followed us before, you know our vision is to help close the wealth gap one business at a time. So thanks for joining us today. My name is Perry Jeffries, your host, also the Entrepreneur CFO. And before we get started, I always like to start with a thought of the day. So uh, thought of the day um, comes from a conversation I recently had uh, with another entrepreneur. And um, what we came up with is that too many entrepreneurs are taking business and financial advice from people with W-2s. And we kind of came about, we came, I came across this uh, because um, uh, my colleague and I were having a conversation about quote unquote financial consultants in the marketplace. And what he said to me um, after um, uh, us sending him through our process, he said, you know what, Perry, you're actually the first advisor that I spoke to that actually spoke to my pains as an entrepreneur. Why is that? Because I've interviewed several, you know, advisors and or uh, CFOs, whatever the case may be. And what I explained to him, I said, well, the reason I can speak to your pain is because I share the same pain. I'm an entrepreneur, so I know exactly what your pain is because I go through the same things myself. So it got us to thinking a little bit uh, around that whole piece. And I find that, unfortunately, a lot of entrepreneurs are taking all of their advice from people who don't walk in the entrepreneur footsteps. So I'm not saying that you can't get value from somebody who's not a business owner, but as you're looking to grow and develop and take your business to the next level, there's some value in in speaking to someone who has expertise versus someone who has academics. Because what I found, even being a former school teacher, is that, you know, academics can take you so far, but as I'm growing older and, and more mature in my entrepreneurial walk, I'm realizing that experience speaks way more uh, and is way more valuable than academics. So that's kind of our thought of the day, y'all. Um, take for what it's worth. I'd love to get your feedback on it, and I'll definitely uh, pick our uh, guest brain on that here shortly. But I'm excited to have a uh, uh, a guest today, uh, Nicholas Barely uh, is joining us. And uh, before we uh, um, give Nicholas a chance to speak here, here's the deal. Nicholas, I this is actually our first time speaking to each other, <laughs> but I feel like we've been connected. So I think we got connected, uh, Nicholas, from our uh, mutual friend, Kevin Stimson. Big shout out to Kev. I think connected us on social media. I've been a part of the uh, Billion Dollar Brotherhood, get a chance to jump on some of your lives and just love the content that you kick out there. And I think it's super, super valuable. Um, so when when we got connected and you said you want to do some podcast episodes, man, definitely humbled and happy to have you here with us today, man, to share share some of your story. But let, before we get started, y'all, let me read this, uh, uh, read this bio here. So Nicholas is the CEO of the Billion Dollar, dollar Body, bestseller author of The Modern Day Businessman, creator of the Billion Dollar Brotherhood, an international speaker and host of the BDB podcast. So make sure y'all go check out Nicholas here and subscribe uh, as well. So his story is kind of interesting and I'll tell you a little bit about my story here shortly too, my friend. But he went from being an obese college dropout to creating a seven figure business, healthy and married to the woman of his dreams, Amanda. Big shout out to Amanda. Uh, Nicholas was a name, a uh, top 30 under 30 influencer, has been featured on numerous media outlets such as Forbes and has interviewed some of the top entrepreneurs. He lives by the philosophy that your network is truly your net worth. Nicholas resides in Southern California and is passionate about his marriage, his son, which is he even a year. He's a newborn, right? 10 months. 10 months, not even a year yet, man. I, I appreciate you joining on. <laughs> I know, I know how that is. Faith, family, and friends, and giving back to those who help. Host uh, of the top uh, rated podcast, The Billion Dollar Body, Nicholas has interviewed top entrepreneurs in the industry, people like Russell Brunson, Grant Cardone, big shout out to Uncle Grant, Jay Abram, Patrick Bet David, Dan Locke, and Ping Jun, just to name a few. Over the past years, he's built a following of thousands of fellow men that are looking uh, for a way to have it all without sacrifice, creating what is known as the three dimensional business, man. Nicholas, what's up, man? Glad to have you on here, family. Dude, I was waiting for you to like intro some other guy on here. I'm like, that guy's pretty freaking legit. Mostly because, dude, five years ago, I was cleaning carpets as my main source of income for people wondering. I failed in my first business. Then I cleaned carpets. I made $19,000 and then $21,000 the year after that. That's like my actual income that I made working Jeez. full time. 
So, Jeez. and I lived in Southern California. I just moved to Austin, Texas. Actually, I just bought a home here. Yeah, Congrats. I lived in Southern California. So, twenty one thousand dollars doesn't get you far. But I appreciate you. You mentioned Kevin. Kevin's a great friend of mine. Phenomenal branding agency. Phenomenal salesperson. Uh, communicator, but also has a great eye for branding in general and he's yeah. the one that helps dress me i wouldn't yeah. i would i'd still be waiting wearing skater clothes from when i was like 16 years old if it wasn't for kevin so great guy and great connection as well and i appreciate you bringing me on here for the people listening my life was changed for the negative in one moment that's what caused me to gain 60 pounds not have a girlfriend for six seven years and really to fail in business like everything stemmed from this one moment Yet what I started believing is that if it can happen for the negative, those one moments that demotivate us, that make us feel terrible, that make us feel like we're not enough, then we could probably have those moments for the positive where it doesn't change. Think People think it happens so gradually, but what happens is it takes a lot of time until we make one decision. And that happened for me as well. That caused me to lose the weight, be featured in all these publications, grow the business, be able to create the life that I wanted. And what I'm hoping here today and what I'm anticipating for the people that stay on till the end is that we can actually create those positive one second forever changes where you look back. The only thing that I ask of you is that you show up and participate in what's going on and we can create an environment where that's a possibility. I love it. I love it, my friend. So when we first got connected and obviously uh, uh, joining your um, your Facebook group, man, you have this story of going you know, from, from obese to, to you know the billion dollar body piece, right? Tell us about how you got there, because what a lot of people don't know is that my background is in health and fitness. So when I saw that, I was like, huh, interesting. So tell us how what kind of what prompted that transition right there, man? How do we go from being obese, making 19, 21, 21 stacks a year, man, to the billion dollar body? How did that come about? You notice how he even just called it stacks, not even racks. He just called me. He's like, oh, they're like, you don't, they don't even really like rack. Because <laughs> like, in okay, Southern California, right. that's just getting you some coffee every once in a while. That's not a whole lot of paper. Yeah, yeah. That's like, yeah, that's that's like literally 20% of my cash going to coffee. Okay. So I'm going to say this. And then also I want people to know that I'm also going to talk about why I'm saying what I'm saying as well later. So it'll be kind of like a little inception thing. Yeah. So w there's two different sides of it, right? So I built the business yet I, and I was overweight, but why was I overweight, right? There's these emotions that go into it. It's not just I was overweight and now I'm not overweight. And here's the tactical, logical things that you do. People know what they should be doing to be healthier. If I said, do you, do you know one thing you could be doing right now to be healthier? Do you know one thing right now that you could do to build your business? Everyone would have the one thing. They're just not doing that thing. Yeah. And so why are they not doing the thing? Probably because of the emotions and the things that they've gone through that they have to overcome mentally, internally to be able to take action on the things they know. But they get told that they just need to go learn more things. And in the pursuit of learning something new, all of a sudden they're going to take action on the thing that they already knew that they should do back in the day. But somehow by learning something new, they're going to take action. So with that, when I was four years old, my parents broke up. So I had the emotions of my parents living 10 minutes away from each other and feeling like I was the glue, the bad glue that kept them together because they didn't want to talk to each other. They said when I was 18, they were never going to talk again. Yet right. I was the only reason why they talked. And when they talked, they didn't talk. They fought, right? So at seven, I started feeling like the weight of all of that. And I actually wrote like a suicide letter, which was pretty wild at wow. seven. And I, just like looking back, like I don't know what it was, a cry for attention or that I was like the one thing that was causing problems. And I just didn't want to be that anymore. Yet I had a dream to be a professional motocross racer. So that was like my main goal. And that brought me to that one moment where it changed my life for the negative forever. And what's interesting is that in every single person's life right now, whatever they've gone through, whether the person meant it or not, right? My dad didn't mean to hurt my feelings, which I'll talk about here in a second. He didn't mean to crush my dreams. Yet your perception of life is your reality. Meaning that if I say something nice to someone and they take it as me being rude, their experience is that they got hurt and that yeah. experience is real, whether I meant it or not, that is their reality. And as children growing up, that's typically what happens. We have this hard moment that happens and our family doesn't even remember it. Our friends don't, even, oh, I don't remember doing that to you. I didn't even mean that you took it the wrong way, but that perception is our reality and that reality defines our life. Because it shapes the lens that we look at everything through. Mm. So if we get rejected, even though it might not have been, we now all of a sudden have this fear of rejection or that same type of person hurting us. So from that rejection, I remember 
reaching out to my dad and all I wanted was his approval. I was like, dad, I want to be the best motocross racer in the world. And he looked at me and just these words pierced me, man. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. And he goes, you'll never be the best. Wow. And I just remember just, that was the one thing that I had like in my back pocket, right? That was like my Trump card. Like I was going to do that. And then everything was going to be great. My dad was going to be like, that's who I've been looking for that kid. And he said that and it, it just, I don't know, something broke inside of me. I didn't talk to my dad for almost three and a half years. I'd only see him during Christmas. I remember him going and knocking on my door at my mom's house and, and I just wouldn't answer it. I just was hiding. I was hiding from someone who saw greatness in me. I was hiding from someone who wanted to see me. I was hiding from the reality. And that's when I ended up gaining the 60 pounds. So I gained these 60 pounds. I lost, I was had a 3.5 GPA, went down to 1.8. I graduated because I went to summer school every single year. So every year I was in summer school flunking classes, didn't even get my license until I was almost 17 years old. When you get it, when you're 16, I had nowhere to drive. I was embarrassed. I was self-conscious. Think about this. Self-consciousness mm -hmm. is just being conscious of yourself only. Oh, I like that. That's all that it is. You're always, oh, how's this shirt fit on me? Oh, these pants too tight. Can people see my love handles? Does this jacket look? Dude, that's all about you. Part of the reason why all of a sudden we take care of ourselves is so that we can actually reach others because we're not thinking about ourselves so much. Mm, that's right? powerful. The, like ultimately, it, it's not they, they say that like confidence is not thinking or or even being humble is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. Mm -hmm, I love that. Right? It's like I it's not that. about like you having to make to not think about yourself. No, it's taking care of yourself so that you're not sitting there in self-consciousness mode all day. So one day some kid comes to school and this is how simple a message can be. And through his actions, which is what you talked about in your daily thing that you guys give mm -hmm. through his actions of eating healthy. I was like, dude, what are you doing? And realize I was wearing the same sweatshirt every day, covering up my man boobs, right? Cause I had man boobs, mm -hmm. super scared to stand out because if I stood out, people could call me out and tear me down. Like I was so afraid of someone seeing me cause they could be like, you're fat. And I'd be like, they're, they're right. Like my insecurities are right here in front of me. Yeah. So I asked him, why, why did you bring fruit to school, dude? And he looked at me and he's like, oh, I, I'm a boxer. I need to weigh in at the correct weight. And they put me on a high performance diet. And boom, it just shifted for me. I was like, there's a plan to be able to get from here to here. Yeah. And I just went home. I did the same exact thing and I lost the 60 pounds. So how did that all of a sudden turn into the business? So I lost that weight. I ended up losing it a very unhealthy way. I starved myself. I ate yeah. salads with no dressing with my hands, right? Like leaves <laughs> with my hands. Literally. I didn't know how to work out. I was too scared to go to the gym because I had never been to the gym. I said, once I'm fit, then I'll go to the gym. Once I know how to use the equipment, then I'll go to the gym because I didn't want to have people in my city look at me and see that I was an idiot loser. Uh, man, I don't know how to use this. I can't bench 50 pounds. I, couldn't, I don't even know if I could do the bar. How do I even do this? So it led me to hide, hide, hide. Yeah. Pause for a second. Anyone who's ever read Arnold Schwarzenegger's autobiography, where uh, I didn't, I didn't graduate hardly. So whatever one it is that he's still alive and he wrote it about his life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, whoever read that, noticed that he covered up his entire body, all the good things, and he only exposed the worst part of his body, which was his calves, because he knew something that I didn't at the time. I thought that I was stuck in my situation, my fat body, my bad reality, not knowing how to work out, not being in shape. I thought I was stuck there forever. So I covered up all the worst parts of my body and only showed the best parts. I wore the perfect type of underwear that made myself look good. I wore the perfect type of pants that made myself look good. I wore the perfect sweatshirt that just covered up all my insecurities the best. Yeah. But my biggest fear was that if I ever got stood out, then all of a sudden people would be able to see who I truly am, which is a fat loser. And so because wow. of that, I never took any opportunities. Arnold gotcha. Schwarzenegger, he showed the worst part of his body because he knew he could change it. And if he oh. focused on that area, that he'd be able to grow that area and then it won't would no longer become an insecurity. How often, my wife actually coached me on this the other day, she was kind of nervous about guns. She was fearful about them. She didn't know like how they worked or anything. And so she booked a lesson to be able to get taught in close quarters, self-defense with guns. And all of a sudden she left there and she was like, oh my gosh, like we kill our insecurities by actually taking action in that area. When she became familiar with the guns and familiar with how they worked, all of a sudden the fear and the insecurities and all those different things started falling off because she started taking action in that area. So that led me to getting married. I got married at 20. My wife was 18. And I just did, to be honest, I just really didn't want to be away from my wife. And I thought, what are the ways that I could create that reality? I did. I wanted unlimited income potential. 
and I didn't want to work two separate jobs. So we went into business together and we ended up failing that business. And I had to go and clean carpets for my dad for two and a half years. And it was so scary going to that new transition. But I looked at what did I have in front of me? What I had was my knowledge base. I had lost weight, kept it off. It was something that I didn't the- like theoretically go through, right? I wasn't the guy with the six pack that never gained weight before and knows how to be healthy, even though he can eat donuts and ice cream every single day. While everyone else, they eat a green bean and they gain weight. <laughs> they don't eat food and they gain weight. Right. So I had been through that experience and I thought, this is what I'm going to do. And I failed. Everyone in our industry, Perry, and many people out there right now, they've been told that their body's their billboard. They can't sell until they can take screenshots of their million dollar, billion dollar bank account. Mm. And so they've been told that they're not good enough to do what they're doing. And so I was 150 pounds. I lost the 60 pounds, yet I was not like Mr. Olympia. So I looked at all these people and I'm like, I'm not qualified. I'm not qualified. My body's my billboard. Why would anyone work with me over this guy? So I was comparing myself to everyone else because they had a better body than me. I thought, why does my story matter? And so real quick, as we get into some of this, like you can pause me at any time, but this kind of goes into why did I tell you this story and how did it actually grow the business? Mm -hmm. So notice that everyone listening right now, at some point, you probably found yourself either more connected to me because vulnerability shows more of who I am. And when people know more about you, they have an opportunity to either like you more or hate you more, but Mm -hmm. mostly like you. And, and they have the opportunity to love you more. Mm. There is no way to grow love without greater understanding of something. This is why you can fall deeper in love with your mate, because as you get to know them more, you have an opportunity to fall deeper in love because you can't fall deeper in love without greater understanding. Yet most influencers out there never talk about their real life, never talk about themselves. And the quickest bridge of building a relationship or bond is through vulnerability. So I told you some things that are vulnerable and you probably found yourself in those stories. Perry would know this as like, if you had a lead magnet, something for free that you give out, Mm -hmm. that thing for free is bait to draw on the right fish. That would be great in your ecosystem for your offer. That's why he created this podcast. Hello. Right. So that you could bring in the right people, the right bait to bring in the right people to work with them, just the Mm -hmm. right ones and serve the ones who don't, they can still listen. That's what your story is. Mm. That story, each one of those stories brings in people that are like, oh man, I relate to that. I found myself inside of that story. Oh, that uh, that vulnerability. I wish I was able to say that because I know that my problems aren't just mine. You're unique. You got a thumbprint that's only yours, whatever, but you're not so unique that your issues and problems in life are only yours. Mm-hmm. It's just everyone else is afraid to talk about it. So while everyone else is talking about only their successes, which only a small fraction of people can relate to because not everyone succeeded. Everyone's failed. And when you talk about your problems and how you overcame them, not just your problems, but how you overcame them, all of a sudden now they're like, that's the person I want to talk to because they've gone through the same struggles. I can relate to that and I know they can get me out of here. Whereas success, billion dollars, dude, I don't know if I can do that. People struggle with their internal belief that they can go out there and do that. So I failed in my business, man. I told this story that I told you just now about why I was overweight, how I got overweight. And man, it transformed our whole business. And that's been the foundation of our business has been telling these stories, getting people connected to it, and then getting them transformations. This is so powerful, brother, because I think about my space being in the, the financial space. And for whatever reason, whether um, regardless kind of you know, what your background is, sometimes having a conversation around finances can be intimidating, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't want to talk to this guy because, you know, my finances aren't in order. Kind of like going what you were saying right here. Oh, I'm not going to go to the gym until I get in shape. Or I'm not going to go to the gym until I learn how to use the equipment. Well, yeah. that's why you should. You're not going to learn how to use it, <laughs> use the equipment or get in shape until you go to the gym, right? So I run into that a lot. And then when I tell my story how I lost everything, not once, but twice, it's amazing how that brings down those, you know, saying those barriers and people are able to relate. And I've always done it just because I just believe in transparency. You know, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. Right. You know, yeah, yeah, I can I can admit, hey, I was the financial advisor who lost everything. I'm not the only one. I'm probably just one of the few who are going to tell you how they lost everything. Right. But it's amazing how comfortable it makes people. So this then. Kind of what you said right here, brother, it kind of just then really just goes right into your 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 core, one of your core presentations I've seen as far as your, you know, your your mess being your message. So what you literally did was took that experience 
of you know the failure the insecurity the anxiety the pain and you were transparent about it and and talked about again kind of what we talked about earlier academic versus experience you have the experience so you didn't go to school and, and say hey i'm gonna go study you know nutrition and exercise physiology and da da da. hey no this is what my experience and people have connected with that experience and that story and by you able to connect with those folks now you've been able to create a seven-figure business is that correct 100 so, percent and this it is all a, started this is with amazing. that first first attempt though and it didn't go very well so what you're talking about there's two reasons why people want to buy Mm -hmm. Number one is that they want to be like you. And again, whatever people are doing in the mass market is probably not exactly what you want to do. You kind of want, they say like Bob and weave, right? Like you want to like, while they're, while they're Bob and like, we, we like, we yeah. do the opposite of what's going on. Yeah. And so maybe in the future, this might be a thing again. Yet right now, everyone can be like, and this is a good thing. People message me now with where I'm at, buying this house out here in Austin for my family, Mm -hmm. buying whatever, like setting goals and buying different things. People see that and they're like, oh, that's cool. I want to be like that. My marriage, my son. Oh man, I want to be just like that. So that's number one. People they want to be like. That might be for you. If you invest correctly and you compound multi-million dollars, mm -hmm. they're going to go, that's pretty legit. I want to be like that. If mm -hmm. you buy a big home with the earnings off the interest that you get back from the money that you invested, People are going to be like, that's cool. You have a nice car. Even for me, dude, if someone's driving Lambo through my neighborhood, there's mm -hmm. a couple Lambos, R8s, all these things. I'm mm -hmm. like, if we go to a cafe, I'm going to be looking for that guy. Cause I'm like, oh, like I, I relate to that. He must be doing something cool. Mm -hmm. But the second thing that people miss out on is being someone that they're just like, and they forget about that. Huh? And, and so you talked about two things that when you tell your story, people connect to it. But when you tell your story as well, you now have freedom. Because now you don't feel like you're hiding from all of your failures mm -hmm. that you had in the past. Think about Eminem. He did this really well. So I grew up, my brother actually had a computer. My brother was always really techie, six years older than me. He has a different dad, same mom. Okay. And my sister has a different mom, same dad. So uh -huh. that's why it's a crazy situation. Some people say, I didn't know you had a brother. I'm like, yeah, like he has all these other brothers too. And I got grandma, grandpa, and I think that's my grandma. I'm not sure. So my brother had this computer, but he was always at his dad's house. So we, I had this computer in my room and he had all this downloaded music. This is when you used to like burn music onto a CD. Oh and like yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And it was like all of Eminem songs. Okay. So I'm like 10, 11, 12 years old, no internet. And uh -huh. I'm just like, hitting all these songs. So I find the rap battles from eight mile. Yeah. And when eight mile came out, like I was too young to even watch it. So my mom yeah, like yeah. didn't let me and I found it. And I was like, Oh man, this is going to be the thing that I'm going to memorize. And I remember listening to his music much like I'm telling my story. And I found myself in the stories, like the old music that he had, it was like, uh, I, my stepfather hit me. So I socked him back and broke his nose. My house is a broken home. I have no control. I just let my emotions go. I was like, yeah, like this yeah. is sick. I remember just repeating that part because <laughs> I was like, I want to sock him in the nose. Like I want to hit my, like, I was like, that's what I want to do. Uh, not my stepdad. So my stepdad's watching, but just in general, I was angry. I was upset. Yeah. So I memorized these songs. I remember this was a guy that was different, right? He was like yeah. uh, this white dude in a predominantly black rap industry yeah. in eight mile, which is just an exit in Michigan. Mm -hmm. yep. He lived in a trailer park, which his mom was like a druggie and he, lived in yep. a crappy place. So that was embarrassing. His girlfriend was getting banged by other people, mm -hmm. right? Like these are the things that he talks about in the movie. Yeah. And so he's so nervous that he's throwing up, right? Vomit on my sweater already. Mom spaghetti. Yeah. He's yeah. nervous before he gets on stage. So he chokes. Think about how embarrassing that is. Everyone's like, this guy's a loser. So he's so afraid to put himself out there. He's so afraid that if he goes out there and puts himself, he'll get rejected. Everyone will find out who he is, which is a failure. Everyone's mm -hmm. failed. We all have these fears these mm -hmm. insecurities, this self-consciousness that he couldn't even rap unless he was in this small little thing. And everyone's like, you're amazing. But anytime he got in front of people, he knew he was exposed. Yep. So one day he decides, I'm just going to lay it all out. I'm done. Like, yep. I'm not even going to do this anymore. I'm just going to go out there and share it. But check this out when I talk about who he's just like. This was so interesting. He goes up there and in the very final rap battle, he goes against like, I think it's like Papa Doc or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. And and so what does he do right off the bat? He starts off with something that I've ne never seen anyone talk about with this rap battle. He, he starts off with everybody in the 313, mm -hmm. which was the area code that everyone there lived in besides all the successful dudes who was who they want to be like, right? I want to be like these guys, but they weren't who they were just like. 
Uh-huh. Right. He talks about he went to Cranbrook. That's a private school. His real name's Clarence. Right. He's like, he's actually just a better than person that can't relate to anyone. And all of a sudden, Eminem got everyone to go, yeah, they, I'm they, in they, the 313. You're in the 313. They're rocking with him. We're they're all the same. Him. Right. That he's connection. Like, these guys aren't like these guys, us for same. He's like, these people are not like you. I'm like you. He then showcased everything that he had done in his life wrong, everything that everyone could use against him. And it actually made everyone connect with him because now they knew who he was and they understand what was going on to the point where that guy couldn't even say anything about him because it was all about tearing him down. But he just t- put it all out there for everyone. So every yeah. time you share your story, it actually takes away ammunition from everyone to call you out, which gives you freedom and power to be able to go out there and talk because you're no longer afraid that they're going to find out that you live in a trailer park with your mom, right? That your mom is... Andre, like whatever the thing is, he wasn't afraid of that anymore, right? He's, he talked about all these different things. And that gave me this feeling of like, I want to have my Eminem moment. So the first thing for me is I had to figure out, I thought my story didn't matter. I told you my body was my billboard. Yeah. I thought that my problems didn't matter. Yet I told you that when I first went out and told my story, not just that I was overweight, which I didn't even tell my wife until we were engaged. I didn't show her a picture. I was that, I just didn't want people. It was like going to jail. You know, if someone went to jail and got out, they might not want to tell people that because then they'll look at them differently because right. they'll look at them based on something they did in the past rather than who they are now. Right. That was kind of how I felt was if people saw that I was overweight, they'll look at me differently. They won't see that I'm a disciplined guy that doesn't struggle with that anymore. And so all of a sudden I went to this event, 40 people, and this event asked me to speak on how they could lose weight. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I've never spoken in front of anyone. I'm cleaning carpets as my main source of income. And I, I was like, I'm going to have my Eminem moment. This is going to be the time where I tell them I was overweight. And I'm going to tell them why. Dude, I go up there. I start talking about never done it. So I start breaking down crying in front of everyone. Oh, I was man. so upset because I'm like, I'm not giving them any value. And everyone in that room paid five grand to be there. So I was like, oh my gosh, like I just ruined this whole thing. I'd have my wife come up and help me finish the talk. I didn't get to get into any tactics. And still to this day, maybe six years later, they talk about that one moment that changed everything. That's when everyone felt the vulnerability and all connected. And they still talk about the spot that I stood in when I told that story. When I started crying, whenever it's anyone else starts crying, they go, I'm in the spot. Because they still remember that anchor of that moment that brought everyone together. I left there. I had 10 people reach out to me. And we did over $27,000 in sales. I literally quit my job like two weeks later. We've never had a not profitable month since that month in our wow. business quit cleaning wow. carpets, quit all of that. So not only did I see that my story was powerful, the second problem though, that people will go through, because now they know like, all right, if I tell people my story, what I went through and how I overcame it, and it's strategic to my product, other people will see, man, I could do that as well. Yeah. But what's the second thing that we go through, dude, like with losing weight or being fit or making money or whatever it is, how many clients we have, it's okay. I, I have a story, but it's not good enough. Like I didn't lose enough weight. I oh. didn't get fit enough. I haven't made enough money. Oh, I made 200% returns this year in the market, but it was with only $10,000. So it really wasn't like, it wasn't like a billion dollars like these other guys. So then we start telling ourselves that our story isn't good enough. And that's when I started realizing that there was these other guys that I go to these events and I'd speak and everyone would buy from me. And there was these other guys that dude, they had lost more weight. They had freaking been more buff. They were shredded. Yeah, it was so interesting because they didn't, one, those guys weren't telling their story, but second, they related to my story in a way they can never relate to someone else's in the opposite, right? My wife grew up in a perfect home, like Christian family, uh, mom and dad are still together. They live a mile down the road so they could be next to my son. They're perfect family. Yet inside of a perfect family, you have different problems. You don't have yeah. no problems. You have different problems. Right. And now she's able to relate to people that I could never relate to. So I started realizing my story is uniquely mine. And when I share it, it's going to reach people that no one else in the world can reach. And I started looking at my problems differently. I started looking at them as almost like places where they didn't have any water. There's places still today that don't have clean water. Mm-hmm. And ultimately... You either need to dig a, find a spring or dig a well. That's what I'm like. I don't know. You either need to complain about it and be like, I don't know what to do. Or we need to like problem solve and figure out what to do. Right. So once we figure that out, rather than thinking, man, I have such a hard life. There's other people out there that don't have the things that, that, that don't have the same problems as me. They're so lucky. That isn't going to really do anything. 
So the second thing is if we can figure this out, now we can go to other people that don't have water and either teach them how to find a spring or dig a well. And so sure. I started looking at my problems and I'm like, dude, if I'm struggling with this, millions of other people are struggling with this. Yes. And if I overcome this, I can then go back and help these other people who are struggling with it as well, overcome that. And I could either create a business about it. I could create a nonprofit about it. I could just share it, that yeah. message and help other people out. And as I started relating to that, dude, that's when the business started blowing up. Because back when I used to think, don't look at my problems, I never related to anyone. Because I was always like, oh, I was overweight, but I don't struggle with that anymore. Oh, all these people, I'm not the same as them. I'm different. Like I just don't have those same struggles. Yeah. Now I did. I just put turned a blind eye to them because I was only thinking about myself. And you said we were going to get to your opening message. Yeah. There's three levels, dude, that people are going to want to have in their life of areas that they're getting fed from. Number one, mentors like you. Yep. Right? They want to learn from people like you. That's why they're listening. Number two is people they run with. Who are the people that are like equally yoked on the same mission as you, same level business that you can run with? Because they're not going to be able to talk to you every single day. Right. You have your group of people you're running with. Right. And then the third one that most people lack and that I lacked the most was that I was so focused on my own growth that I never went into contribution, which was you can only learn so much through knowledge like you talked about and even action. Mm -hmm. There's only so much you can learn from your own growth your own fitness journey, your own business journey. At right. some point, the next level of growth is taking what you know and teaching it to these people that all have different problems and perspectives and different lifestyles. And if you could teach them, that's where you're going to see the maximum amount of growth is having that third level is what's the place that you give back. And that's where all of a sudden I started seeing this is where I was seeing massive growth. So number one, your story matters. Number two, not only does your story matter, it's good enough and it uniquely relates to people. And more people can relate to your failures than your success. Yeah. And number three is that your story actually gives you freedom. Sometimes it's for you. Yeah. I posted something on Instagram maybe four weeks ago, a month and a half ago. It lost me 1,700 followers in 24 hours. Wow. And it, everyone thinks I'm dumb for posting it. Mm -hmm. And all I did, to be honest, was I just told people what I had done. Think about this for a second. This was a social experiment. This is one of the first times I've talked about this. I was like, it was about voting, which is stupid. I don't think anyone should post about it. It's really dumb. But I thought, I have all these people following me. And if I don't tell them who I voted for, whether I like them or not, I just had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. If I don't tell them who I voted for, then they only follow me because they don't know what I did. I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. Huh. And if they knew what I did, then they wouldn't. some of them wouldn't follow me which means that if they follow me because I don't post about it, they only like me because they don't know who I am. And if they knew who I was, they wouldn't follow me, which I wouldn't want that person anyway. So I literally made a post and said, hey, guys, this is what I did. Yeah. Not you should do it or any of these things. Right. And of course, I made it like a little bit like standout-ish with like a little bit too much stuff on it. Like the picture was super out there. Yeah. And, and then the next day, I made a post about that. I said, listen, guys, I just wanted you to know what I did. Whether you like it or not, or whether I, it's not like I'm, that's the problem in today's society is if you do something, they think you're, you're all out. Like you're, if you voted for this person, that means you actually agree with every single thing they've ever done in their entire life, their clothes they wear, the food they eat, like you're the same. Not, right. not true. Yeah, I did it. And again, it wasn't for anyone else. It didn't get me more followers. It didn't make me more money. If anything, it hurt that yet. It was something inside of me where I said, man, I just don't want that hanging over my head. I'm going to talk about it because I want freedom from it. And when I have freedom and I'm not afraid that if I post this or if I say this the wrong way, people will not like me, then all of a sudden I'm going to have more freedom to put myself out there and ultimately generate more money in the future. Have this more success. Is, this right here is so powerful, brother, because, wow, this is uh, in, in, in full transparency, you know, um, I think a lot of entrepreneurs try to straddle that. Hey, I don't want to choose one side or the other because I don't want to impact my opportunity to make money here. I don't want to rub, you know, this set of clients a certain way and whatnot. And I actually had a conversation about this with some other entrepreneurs. And if I'm hearing you correctly, man, what it's really coming down to is just always be your authentic self because you want the right people. The right people are going to continue to follow you. The right people are going to continue to connect with you. And by being your authentic self, you then give people one, you, one, you give yourself that freedom, but two, now people 
have the opportunity to really connect deeper with who you are. And those are the people that you want in your tribe and your and your and your village and the whole nine. So that's that's really, really deep, y'all. For folks who are listening to this, this is some powerful stuff. Um, really from yeah, a psychology. example too. Like when I put myself out there, yeah, I got dude, I posted I don't know how many dozens of people that told me they want me to die. They were like wishing curses on me, all these things. So then when someone else that believes so completely opposite of me and they post something up, dude, I say, dude, awesome. Congrats. Thanks for voicing like your opinion. Like everyone's on a journey. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, personally, this is something about me. I, I don't like this whole mask situation. Like I don't, I don't enjoy it. I don't put myself in lots of situations where I have to wear them, but I, I'm not one of the diehard like mask wears but literally i was the most diehard person when this whole thing happened with the coronavirus america all these things mm -hmm. i was like people touch my lid on my coffee and i was like did you see that like <laughs> did you see i'm like they're going out of business i'm like there's no way that's gonna last they need gloves they need to change them out every time and and if i judge people because they believe differently than me Dude, I, I literally believed that just the other day too. And it was only because of a change of education and stuff that made me change. And mm -hmm. so often it allows us, when we put ourselves out there, we also know what it's like and should be more accepting mm -hmm. of other people's beliefs or opinions because we're never going to sit there and, and be able to convince people to believe something. We can only live our life by example. And I get mm -hmm. lots of crap for this because people think I should be pushing my beliefs on other people. No, I'm going to live a life that's worth modeling. And if people want to know how do you live that way, then we can have a conversation and do it through trust. But I'm never going to judge people because they believe differently. They've just been through different experiences. They've had different, they, there's a reason why they believe what they believe. There's no reason to bash people for it. And when I get bashed, it makes me realize, uh, like when pe other people put themselves out there, they're going to get bashed too, just from a different side. Yeah. And if we kind of bridge that gap and be like, yo, you believe differently than me. I believe differently than you. That's pretty cool. We can kind of use this to be able to drum up a whole new belief system to refine our own beliefs rather than just having an echo chamber. That's where I feel that real success is had is when we're able to kind of accept that. And again, not accepting murderers or all these things that are bad, yet mm -hmm. you can still empathize with that and be like, dude, something must have happened in this person's life to like really jack them up mm -hmm. and still have accountability for it. But uh, ultimately, I feel like when you put yourself out there like this, you can now relate to some of the other people. And it's not about just dividing. It's about standing for what you believe for while being accepting of people that don't believe the same way. Mm, I love it. So that's all that brother. That's that's super powerful. Uh, let me we're going to do a quick pivot because I'm because sure. I'm dying to act. I'm dying to ask this question and I don't want you to give away your secret sauce here. But the I love the, the the concept around the transparency. Your 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 turn your your mess into your message. Totally. But what you, but you, what you've done, which I think has been totally remarkable, is you've done that, but you've been able to monetize that. Yep. What is the mindset around being able to do that? Because it's one thing to be transparent and be like, hey, but how do you then turn that into yeah. revenue? Yeah, because some people may be transparent. No one cares, and that could happen, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. And, and nobody deserves your story either. You don't have to broadcast it out into the world. Maybe mm -hmm. you just tell your friends and get consulting and you know what I mean? Like get help. Yeah. Yet that it could fall flat and the world doesn't deserve all your stories. Like I tell people this, you don't have to share your story with anyone. Yet for me, what I noticed from one of my mentors, Cole Hatter, mm -hmm. he said that if they say it, they're always right. But if you say it, you could be wrong. Right? Like mm -hmm. if you set, tell people you need to lose weight, they're like, okay, maybe. But if they tell themselves, I need to lose weight, they'll always believe themselves. And so in that journey of, all right, how do I stop telling people how to live their life? And how do I start telling stories that get people to build the belief of what I want to tell them? So if I want to tell them, you need to lose weight, what is the story that I could tell them to help them tell themselves, I need to lose weight? And mm. then the one who provides the solution for these people. So yep. no matter what I do, I'm always thinking if I tell people what to do, tell them to buy, tell them they need this product, tell them they need to take this action, even if it's a coaching client or a client onboarding for yep. our uh, service-based business or even carpet clean, you can tell them a story that gets them to prepare and be successful as a customer. But most of the time, people just tell people what to do without telling them why. So because of that, they're like, ah, maybe I'll do this, maybe I won't. And so when it comes to what I do, 
the way that I've exercised that the most has been through building these beliefs. So let's say my post-production podcast and YouTube agency, and that way it's like a totally different company. Mm -hmm. How, what was the way that I used mess to message for that? Well, when I started my podcast in 2016, we launched, we became a number one best podcast for six weeks in a row. And out of all new podcasts, we had over 205 star reviews. Yet my wife hated editing the podcast, hated it to the point where it put so much pressure on us that we ended up taking weeks or even months off. Luckily, we continued to fight through that and hired a team and all these people to help with the editing and yeah. editing the videos and uploading. And now it's like tens of thousands of dollars a month just to run a team. Yep. Yet our business is literally ran off the backbone of the people we've been able to create. You talked about my net worth, network being my net worth. That yeah. came from the podcast. And if I would have quit, I would have never seen the success that I have now today. Yeah. All because, but I had to build a team to do it. Mm -hmm. And then I would transition from that story and be like, like how many guys out there, like you either want to start a podcast, but you don't know how the technical stuff, or you have one and it's so inconsistent. Even if you do it, you're not getting the marketing materials to actually push it out there and have it grow. Mm -hmm. How cool would it be if I were to give you access to my team that I pay tens of thousands of dollars a month to be able to run or just from chipping in? Cause they say that buying something's expensive, but sharing it is inexpensive. Imagine if you could just literally click a button record the podcast and then literally drop it into a file and everything comes back to you all complete without having to invest tens of thousands of dollars and training people for tens of thousands of hours to be able to create these materials. If you're interested in that drop, I'm in below and I'll send you the details. We'd book a phone call, but it all started because the hook was my hook would be in that story. I would say, guys, I wanted to quit the podcast. I'm quitting. I did the podcast. It went great, but it was too hard, too stressful. Couldn't edit, couldn't market it, hated it, but we didn't quit. And I had two options. There was no good options for editing out there. So I created a $10,000 plus a month team just to run the podcast. You could go do that. If you want to start one, be consistent, not give up. Or, or you could hire us and for a hundred bucks an episode, 250 bucks an episode for video, we'll do all your show notes, your YouTube SEO, your your YouTube thumbnail that's all perfectly done, the, the tags, uh, we'll, we'll cut them down into Facebook videos and Instagram videos and Instagram stories and we'll take the quotes and we'll do show notes that are SEO optimized and you don't have to do anything. It's up to you though. You can either fail at the podcast, build a team on your own, or you can hire us. It's up to you. So I always give options and I'm always using those stories. So that'd be one of them. Yeah. Right? Like if I were to talk about uh, weight loss, it'd be the same thing. I'd be in a group and I would tell my story. Hold on, Nicholas, before, before you go on right there, because yeah, yeah. I, I know because you're proficient in this, man, but that was absolutely fire. That was golden right there. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm trying to sell you right now. I know you have a team, but I'm like, come on, dude. <laughs> you, you, you're doing good. I was about to type I'm in. I said, well, I can't type I'm in. I'm on the dang old thing too. So, yeah. but, but brother, that was absolutely phenomenal. So a couple just takeaways from that. Build a team. Stay in the trenches, even when it gets hard, because, again, that experience, going back to what we talked about earlier, the academics versus the experience speaks volumes to that. And then taking that experience, which was tough, and then turning that into a revenue stream by helping other people out so they don't have to go through that pain. Brother, that's that that that's gold right there. That's and what's the selling point, point, dude? I'm, I have done it. I yeah. built a podcast. We've been down to number 34 in the U.S., because I've done it, that all of a sudden makes everything I'm doing have a higher value. Because I'm like, also, my team who's helped do this, we're going to help do that. You may create that with your clients though, right? You might have, yeah. I've done this with 50,000 clients or t t five clients. We've yeah. been able to do this. Now they're like, oh, like now I see why this is valuable. Yeah. And yeah, 100% man. So one thing that people can do right now is they can do, they can one, they could start thinking of what are all the things that I tell people to do? that I could start telling a story of how I learned it. Mm -hmm. Just start with how you learned it. Mm -hmm. right? if, if it. If it was losing weight or editing the podcast, I'm like, oh man, like I learned that we had to edit the podcast and I realized it was fun at first and then it wasn't producing money right away. So it went on the back burner. Yeah. Yet I, I would have never known if I would have quit that it would have totally transformed my business. And wow. so all of a sudden, like that story, I'm telling just a recollection of what I went through to discover this. Yeah. And what people will find is they'll have the same discoveries you do just by hearing the story. Russell Brunson, one of my mentors, I've been in his inner circle for years. I was wearing his robe or 
that was the wrong way to say it. I was wearing an inner <laughs> circle robe this morning. Yeah. He's so good at this. And he says that if you could just master this, it's the most important thing. If you just say one thing in marketing your message, it'd be this. He talks about how he was a wrestler and he got married and he needed to make money online. And then YouTube ads went too crazy. And so he started building funnels. And he had this inspiration of a guy who made a million dollars in a day. And he thought if he could do it in a day, Russell could do it in a year. And then Russell made it in a year and then a month and then a day he made a million dollars. And then he's like, and the way that I did it is through these funnels. And everyone's like, I want them. And he's like, yeah, it cost me like 35 grand and six to eight weeks to launch every one. And it took me hundreds of them to then find the one that worked. And people are like, oh my gosh, like I know I need a funnel, but I don't know if I have 35 grand times a hundred plus right. eight weeks times a right. hundred to be able to find my winning funnel. And he's right. like, well, I could show you how you could use this platform that for a thousand, for 3000 bucks, you get the whole year. Plus we're going to show you the templates that work, the sales process that works, the sales videos that work and the marketing materials needed for free. Just uh -huh. if you buy this $3,000 thing and you're able to plug in place. Yep. And he mastered that message so well that he's able to tell that story and people go, I want that. The only other stories that are valuable with that is overcoming people's internal fears. I can't do it. It's not going to work for me. And their external fears, which is uh, imagine for a gym. If a gym's in a small town and I'm in a big town and I say, you can grow, you can get bigger. They're going to go, there's just not enough people here. Oh, the average income's too small. External fear. They're like, oh man, I can't do it in a small town. So what do I need for that? Show them how they can do it in a small town. Not a big deal. And then they're going to go, oh, they did it. I can do it. Yeah. Internal fear. Man, I know. I just don't know how to sell. I'm not good at speaking. Yeah. I don't know how to communicate. Those are things that they're like, I can't do it. Well, then I just share a story about how someone who sucks at communicating did it. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, man, if they can do it, I can do it. And this yeah. goes back again to if you just talk about, look how shredded I am. Look how much money I've made. Look at my investments. They're going to go, yep. You know what to do. You're already really good at it. And you had all the things around you to help you do it. But uh -huh. if you share those different struggles, they're like, man, like that's the domino. I now believe I can do it. And Russell's probably been the biggest contributor along with Cole Hatter uh -huh. to be able to learn this. And inside of it, it leaves people at schizophrenia buying is what they call it. Like literally they have no choice but to buy or they have to think about why didn't I buy? Because they have no excuses. They have no objections anymore. Cause you've overcome all of them. And so at night they're like, why didn't I buy this? And we have dozens of guys in BDB that have invested tens of thousands of dollars that literally showed up to something. And they're like, I was never going to buy something. But afterwards I was like, how can I not buy this? How can like, I not buy it? I'm here for a reason. I have no reason not to. And then they bought and uh -huh. now they're here and then they're happy. And so that's the, that's the kicker is to make sure that you have great products so that when you use these skills, you get people into something really, really good. So I would use that all day of the week. What are the stories to tell what you're already telling people? Just tell them the story. How did you learn it? Yep. Um, the second thing that I would really focus on is start figuring out how can I start telling stories to build beliefs? You know, like in the group, um, I consistently am using stories, four different types of stories. I'll just go over them really quickly. Number one is what's the mission and vision of your company? Yep. Where are you going as a company? People will get behind that. Number two is your story. What are the things in your life that can connect with people to help them get connected with your business? Number three is your client stories because some of your client stories will reach a whole different market than your story and you'll be able to bring them in as well. Mm -hmm. And the fourth thing is random, what, what Russell would call an epiphany bridge, but parables. Right? This would be something that Jesus did, right? <laughs> what are things that people understand they get them to believe something that they don't understand. Gotcha. I ha gotcha. When, Jesus, when Jesus said, Hey, if this, if this tree that he was talking to farmers, if a tree is planted, you're watering it, you're tending it and it doesn't grow any fruit. What do you do? God, like we take it out and we replant something else. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Like do that with your life. Anything that you do, that's not bearing fruit. Don't do it and huh. replace it with something that does. And people are like, yeah, but if you were yeah. to just tell them, you need to do better things with your life, you need to replace the bad things, they wouldn't have got it. So yeah. I consistently, like if I were to do that to listen to this podcast, I would say something like, 
Uh, I went hiking the other day and there was this mountain that was 9,000 foot tall. And I got me thinking, there's three types of people that hike this mountain. Number one is they look at it and they just judge everyone. They don't even hike. They just go, oh, why is that person doing this? These are the people in the cheap seats that tell LeBron he should have passed the ball. But they don't even know how to play basketball. That's not any of you guys. The second type of person just starts climbing the mountain. They do it all on their own. And they find that they consistently have to go back down to the bottom because they're not going up the best proven route. Uh The third type of person, which is me, I invested in a ticket, a shortcut to be able to actually take a tram that went up in 12 minutes to 9,000 feet. If you are like the third person, what you're going to want to do right now is grab this podcast, subscribe to it, and each and every week we're going to launch a new episode that's not, not even a ticket, but it took millions of dollars to create that ski lift. Someone had to go up to the top, build it, invest millions of dollars, and now by just clicking on a button, you can get that information to fast track your way to 9,000 feet. If that's you, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Random, people understand it, they've seen mountains before, yep. and it was real. And so start thinking when you, in day-to-day life, it's like, man, like, Oh, like the glass, I had this glass and it was like, you know, it's not even half full. It's it's mostly empty, but like how we look at this is everything, right? Like you could take every single thing in your life and say, what is the story that I could teach from this and the belief that I can create through it? And the more you do it, the better you'll get. Man, absolute fire, brother. And I I, I tell you the truth, I would tell you, you know, go ahead and and throw your podcast mic on the floor uh, and drop the mic, man, because that was some absolute fire, brother. So with that being said, I apologize to everyone if I spoke fast. I answer Voxers all day, which is like a yeah, yeah, for sure. With all of our clients, yep. I use it at three x speed, and I usually reply at three x speed. Try <laughs> to get as much as possible in the short amount of time that we have. No, Yet, uh, that's the majority of my time is, is spending time with our clients. So yeah. if I talk fast, it's because I talk fast to them as well. No, no worries, brother. You know what I'm saying? We really appreciate it. Man, you have just given us so many gems and so much fire here. I got my notes. I can't wait to go back and listen to the podcast myself so I can digest some things. Definitely be uh, linking up with you. Um, As we close out, man, how can more people connect with you, follow you? Where do you want to point them to? You want to point them to your website, to your social media? Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it, man. So number one is any of the guys out there. We have the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Facebook group that Perry was just talking about that he's a part. You're going to want to join that. Just type it in real quick. Hit request join. But just write down that you were from the podcast or whatever, and that way that we know. Because we go through, we usually delete about 300 people per 150 requests. So if you don't fill out anything, we're not going to accept it because everyone's hardcore, really committed people inside of the group. The second thing is I love investing time on Instagram. I try to show the different parts of life that people don't show. Family, when yeah. things don't go right, whatever it is. And so it's Nicholas Barely on Instagram. Send me a quick message. would love to connect. Mm-hmm. There it is. 